Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Daily Bible Study for Super Newbies. My name is Elizabeth Spragans, and today is Christmas morning. It is December 25th, and today we are talking about 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, on pages 2189 to 2190 of your Life Application Study Bible NIV. Now, yesterday, we talked about the Morning Star that Peter, it was Peter, right? Yes, it was Peter. <laughs> I had to look back. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little goofy happy right now, so I had to look back in my notes. We were talking about how Peter described Jesus Christ as the Morning Star, and we we're talking about light and darkness. Here we're going to introduce you to Apostle John. Apostle John was was a special, was a special apostle. He was the only one that wasn't executed. He was exiled to the island of Patmos and lived until a very old age. Lived a very old age, so he was very special. They used to call, and they call Apostle John the Apostle of Love. He was a, he was sharing in this book his, his words of encouragement, his words of comfort, his words of inspiration about love, about the love of light in darkness. So today we are going to talk about how John was describing God is light. And in, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, God is light. In him there is no darkness. There is no darkness. When you have a light on in the room, do you see any darkness? No, all you see is light. But when you see, when you're in the dark and you see a light, there is light. But in the light, there is no darkness. If we claim to be a part of him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth. That is John, 1 John or, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. If we confess our sins, he will forgive us. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Why is that? Why, ladies and gentlemen, on this fine, beautiful Christmas morning of life, of new life, do we say that if we claim to be a part of him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth? Because the truth is the life. And in God, there is light. So the light of the truth is God, his word. And if we are walking in darkness, which means if we are choosing to turn our back to the light, if we are choosing to ignore the word of God, and we are choosing sin over doing the right thing and living Christ-like, then we make him a liar if we say that we're not sinners. Our very birth, our very existence, we were born in sin. But because of, oh, we're going to talk about this. This is going to get so awesome. <laughs> I tell you what, as we grow and we learn more and more about Christianity and the word of God, we learn how our earlier understandings might not have been quite right. And today is one of those days. Today is one of those days where I'm going to share something with you that is so powerfully wonderful and so beautifully, beautifully life-changing. I'm, I'm just, I was giddy about it. I woke my husband up at 3.30 in the morning. Bless his heart for loving me. Bless his heart for loving me, for waking him up at 3.30 in the morning to share with him that, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe what I just learned. I was reading, <laughs> bless his heart. And I hope, I hope you guys out there get just as excited about learning the scripture and about learning the Bible and about receiving the message from the Holy Spirit, that wow, you know, moment when you hear the message from the Holy Spirit. It's, it's just, it's awesome, it's awesome. That the blood of Christ purifies us. As a brand new Christian, brand new born again Christian, this confused me. It confused me why Jesus Christ had to die. It confused me how his death purified us from sin. None of it made sense to me. And there are still parts of it that I have yet to learn, but what I do understand, I share with you because we grow as we learn, right? 
And that's all that anyone can expect us to do is to grow as we learn and we learn as we go. So if our earlier understanding wasn't quite complete, that means it can become complete. So this is why we're sharing this today on this amazing, wonderful day of celebration of new life, new life. Being reborn, mankind was saved with the birth of Jesus Christ. But why? Why? Okay, so in the Old Testament, now I'm going to explain this to you because I explained it to you before, but I didn't get it all quite right. So I want to explain it to you today on Christmas morning so that maybe one of you out there who hasn't quite come to that place yet will have that aha moment. Like, oh, wow, this is what all of this means. And may your day be wonderful and may your life be changed because you finally understand something that has been a mystery to you your whole life. I remember the day that this made sense to me. It changed everything. Right then and there, my life changed. Right then and there, I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior because it finally made sense. And if you're out there and this doesn't make sense to you yet, I hope that today and today's video will help that it happen for you. So in the Old Testament, you hear about people sacrificing animals, right? Okay. And then they would sacrifice the animal and they would be all good. Whenever they did something stupid, they, they would go to the altar and sacrifice an animal. But I never actually understood why. Earlier, in my earlier understanding, I thought it was so they would feel bad, so they wouldn't sin. So they would remember how bad they felt when they sacrificed the animal, and that would encourage them not to sin. Nope, I got that wrong. I got that wrong. And you know what? I'm okay being wrong because we are forgiven for our sins. The whole point of growing as a Christian is to learn so your relationship can become stronger and you can become closer with God. So being wrong is okay. Not only that, but being wrong is a celebration because when you learn something new, you grow closer to God. You grow closer to that amazing love that escapes so many people's awareness. So if you're wrong and you learn you're wrong and you learn how to be right, congratulations to you. <laughs> but when people, in the Old Testament, when people sacrificed animals, they would symbolically transfer their sin to the animal before they sacrificed it. And then the animal dying would be payment for their sin. Because remember hearing the, the, the wages of sin is death, right? When Adam and Eve didn't listen to God and they sinned, they were suddenly separated from the tree of life. So the cost of their sin was that they were doomed to die because they no longer had access to that tree of life. And of course, the stress and the toil and the, the tribulations and all the things mankind had to go through. But because every man and woman was born in sin and no longer had access to that tree of life in the Garden of Eden, the wages of sin was death. So in the Old Testament, people would sacrifice animals in order to pay for their sins so they could continue to live in God's glory and grace. But when Jesus Christ came back, they called him the Lamb of God. You ever wonder why they call him the Lamb of God? They call him the Lamb of God because all of the sins of the world were transferred to Jesus Christ, his body, the flesh. Remember when we, we used to talk about he condemned sin to the flesh? I didn't really understand what that meant. I just thought he was accepting punishment for all mankind's sin. But it didn't really completely click because I didn't understand why people would sacrifice animals. They would give the animal their sin and they would, you know, that would make the animal have to pay for their sin with death. Like Adam and Eve no longer having access to the tree of life. I really hope I'm speaking this in a way that everybody can understand. But when Jesus Christ condemned sins of mankind to the flesh, that was like all of mankind past, present, and future, transferring their sins to the body of Jesus. 
so that when he sacrificed himself, he paid the price for all sin of mankind. And all we have to do is accept that gift. So the sacrifice of the Old Testament anticipated that Jesus Christ was going to be born and he was going to remove sin from mankind with his death. Imagine sending a child, sending your son to the earth for the sole purpose of receiving the sins of the world and dying, paying that wage. Wow. Wow. And we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ because he did that. Because he came to this world to save mankind from itself. The love that God must have for us to commit his son to accept the sins of the world and then to die on the cross to pay for them. That is a love that's not human. That is a love that is only divine. And the love of Jesus to accept that responsibility. Imagine. And that's for all mankind. So even you out there, no matter what you have been doing in your life, no matter what is anchoring you to depression, or addiction, or anger. No matter what choices you've made in life or what has happened to you that cause you to not want to believe in God, God loved you so much. His son was born a man for the sole purpose of being a sponge for all of mankind's sins so that one day he could pay with his death so that we may all be free. You, yes you, no matter what you're doing right now in your life, no matter how awful of a person you feel like, you can be reborn today. You can receive new life in Christ because it's already been paid for. It's like somebody buying a, an airplane ticket and then handing it to you saying, go on vacation, it's already paid for. Your ticket to heaven has already been paid for. All you have to do is accept it. And it doesn't matter. It absolutely does not matter what you've done. If you accept that Christ did this for you, God hands you your ticket to heaven, hands you your ticket to salvation, to everlasting life. I can think of no greater gift. I can think of no greater act of love, of freedom, of release. If this is you today, if you would like to begin your Christmas morning with new life in Christ, you can do that right here, right now. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need to impress people. You can do this as a matter of your personal choice. And it's okay that you don't understand everything. It's okay that you don't get it yet. That's the whole point of learning. That's the whole point of reading your study Bible. Right here, right here. It's the whole point of going to church. It's the whole point of talking to new people and you know, talking to other Christians. We learn. We learn how to live a Christ-like life. And it's okay if you make mistakes. The very first step, brothers and sisters, to leaving that dark life behind you, leaving that anxiety and that fear, is to invite the light of truth and the love of God and the sacrifice of Christ into your heart. And if you so badly want that, if you are ready to step forward, to have that joy in your heart, you can do that right now. And I'm gonna tell you how. We're gonna close your eyes, you're going to pray. You're gonna close your eyes. 
And you're going to say, Lord, I come to you as sinner. I am imperfect, I have sinned. I believe that you died on the cross for me so that I may be with the Father one day, that your death paid for the price of my sins. Father, I invite you into my life. Jesus, I invite you into my life as my Lord and Savior. And I ask you to be patient with me while I learn. Thank you for your love. Amen. Just like that. You are reborn. You are reborn. Happy birthday to you, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the family. And for those of you out there who are reborn Christians, and for those of you who are curious, this gift is available to everyone. The gift of the sacrifice is freely given to anyone who wants it. It's like walking up to an empty parking lot with a pile sky high of Christmas presents with a sign saying, take one. The gift of Christ's sacrifice is available to everyone who wants it, even you. And with that, brothers and sisters, I thank you for your patience while I, uh, I get back on track with my, my Bible study videos. They were, um, they were tough for me to do the last few days, but as you can see, I've got, I've got things up and running again maybe even a little bit nicer so look forward to tomorrow's bible study being back on track merry christmas and happy birthday i will see you guys tomorrow